Se que de lo bajo, se que de lo bajo, o lo ami o ti de o yo se que le. Welcome to Theory Forge Chronicles. I am Fentimex, of course, joined by Legendary No Toxin and Diggs. How are y'all doing? Doing great. Good. Episode 18. Um, still not a whole lot of information necessarily. Actually, the lack of information might be part of what we talk about a little bit today. Um, mainly going to focus on uh, questions, uh, comments on some YouTube and some other things that have been posted. Um, just talk a little bit about, I guess, what y'all were kind of asking questions about um, as we don't have a lot of infor information at this point. So with that, um, I think it was our last episode maybe. Um, there was a, and I actually don't have the YouTube. I probably should have the name of the person who asked the question. Um, anyways, there was a question about religion, which I guess we haven't really talked a lot necessarily about that I can remember. Um, do y'all remember? I mean, I don't. Do you remember us talking about that at all? Maybe a little bit? Vaguely. Anyway. Yeah, the only conversations I remember having about religion is whether or not they're going to sync up with uh, real world religions. And I think both Nero and I have feelings about that because usually syncs up with the American Christian religions and everything else is kind of left out um and i think they aren't supposed to be syncing with real world religions necessarily but it seems like it comes up an awful lot in the um, monthly or whatever whenever they have events they seem to mention that it was right, actually I just is, yeah Oh, sorry, real quick. So D. Wasserberg in uh, post on one of the last videos. The, the, actually, I'll just read off. So the first question would like to hear more on religion. Um, why would I want to believe in a God? Is, is there faith? Are there faith points? How would you use them? So some kind of interesting questions. Um, why would I want to believe in a God, I guess, is a personal question. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, no, I, I disagree because... <laughs> In in a fantasy worlds like this, where the gods are far more tangible, and there is uh, some uh, prescribed or academic or otherwise method that can be repeated, which you know science is you know something that can be repeated with the same results. If if something like that exists, where you can contact and get influence from a god, then surely there's no room for atheism because. The gods exist. They're tangible. They're there. Just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it ain't there. You know, there's there's room for atheism, but those people are probably crazy. I mean, we've got flat earthers and young earth creationists. And why is atheism kind of crazy? Why do you equate that to flat earth? That's a whole other topic. But uh, <laughs> well, atheism I, would be atheism would be crazy if you have gods tangibly there. Yeah, right. that's that to to have such a rejection of that reality and the rejection of evidence being brought forth that you and your society will not change their their mind and, and accept evidence and instead continue rejecting that there are, you know, one or multiple gods that have influence over the world and that can be, um, demonstrated. you know, yeah, demonstrated then. <laughs> it, it's it's you're right i mean that would have to be like a, a very high level of cultishness and where somebody is like yeah no there's there's no gods and so i'm like the most divine person now on that subject one of the things that i intend to role play is the um the fact that there aren't any gods specifically who pertain to uh, history of the citizens of the world. And so that's one of the my characters kind of 
you know, that's their, their shtick is that it's our own kind of divine task to record our own history for ourselves and retell it because there's no God that does that. So we're the next highest beings that exist that are in charge of that task. Hmm. I guess when I hear the question of religion, my first Obviously, if you're going to put it in a game, it needs to add some sort of benefit, right? Whether that's some sort of stats or some 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 sort of benefit. Uh, why else put it in the game? I guess role playing, but that would seem like a lot of. Why, if it was just role playing, why not let the players create their own and kind of role play their own? Um, so my, I guess my where my head goes is well, what if I, you know, what if you create some sort of system on religion that does provide some sort of benefit, different ways. Do you also provide benefit for, as you put it, atheism for not following that path? Uh, or do you get forced into something like that? Yeah. Well, so we know that astrology hmm. plays a role. Yeah. And impacts us. Um, I don't remember hearing of God specifically. And I think even the celebrations that I'm thinking of are not necessarily religious celebrations. They're cultural, is that right? Yeah, I think that's more... I mean... They're, holiday, they're holidays, but not necessarily religious holidays. It right? was kind of my understanding that the uh, the last thing, the, the Valentine's Day one, was kind of, you know, retelling the story about two gods that, like, loved each other, but, like, couldn't get down anymore because they were on two separate planes or something. Hmm. Wasn't that... Uh, I don't remember. I don't pay that really? much attention. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I could see, you know, that sort of uh, thematic thing that like these these gods who are the creators of the world have this, you know, romance or tragic romance. Like, I'll have to reread it to figure out exactly how it resolves. Um, but the, that's one of the things that's kind of a defining event for the, uh, you know, the lore and history and that I would imagine uh, around times uh, associated with that event they would have um, in-game content, both things that are explicit and things that are maybe a little hidden and secretive that you don't actually know are part of the event, but uh, only appear in proximity of it. And, you know, it could be something like that. That's where if you've been praying to one of those gods or both of those gods or gods that are allies of those gods that you'll be able to get you know, bonuses and, you know, improvements and, you know, be, be more in tune with them. Or likewise, if you pray to gods that are uh, antithetical to them, that you'll have tasks to try to, you know, ruin the other people's rituals and rites or, you know, something else. So it could be an extra driver of gameplay. Well, yeah, but then the other thing that comes to mind. So I, I think back to like EverQuest, you had different, you could have different deities you followed. I don't think it actually added, I don't know what EverQuest is like now. I don't think it actually added necessarily stats or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe determine good, neutral, evil alignment. Um, of course, in World of Warcraft, you have holidays. You don't necessarily have religions per se. Well, when I was practicing, I was a druid and... If, uh, they don't, but I they don't really the call it that, God. right? You aren't selecting one as you create a character. That's my, I guess. Right. Saying. You're not. You're not announcing you're this religion. The reason, the point I'm getting to is when you have a Valentine's Day and you mentioned, well, it's be you know the the lore that's given are two gods, and something like that. Well, if you're having a world that has so many different cultures, why would you expect all of them to have right the same two gods? So, so are you going to? force that upon everyone does it matter well do you provide I, everyone else with something else to do i kind of like that question because it, what it makes me think of is the idea that um if there is some academic way to kind of reach out to these gods and get response then it might be that the gods are the same but they're known by different names to different cultures based on the context by which that culture reached them, the language that existed at the time, the nature of their relationship, etc. So it could be one of them is a god they have kind of a more distant relationship. So it's more of like, you know, the one who brings flowers or something in their, you know, ancient tongue versus this other group 
they have more of like the name that God specifically prefers in their language that they've given them. It's like, please call me this. Let's be a little less formal about things. And so, you know, that would be what contributes to why each culture would have different names and different relationships with the gods. But ultimately, they're all the exact same pantheon, just kind of arranged and and represented differently. Well, there's a few things. So one, with World of Warcraft, as I was saying, for Druids, I would get specific quests for the goddess of nature that would, um, you know, side quests that would help. Um, and I would expect that that would be even more the case with Chronicles of Valyria. If I do recall correctly, like the Weird, um, they, the god that they, and I think it's a goddess, the goddess that they worship um, has them go out and maintain balance. Um, and they send them on quests specifically to do that. And some of those might be kill quest that they might have to do mm -hmm. yeah. um and so if you don't do those though those do affect your character if your god sends you out on a task that you choose to ignore for whatever reason that is gonna impact you um and i think in terms of pantheon i think it's one pantheon different cult different tribes will focus on different gods um they believe in them all, as far as I know, but they don't necessarily worship, which is a another thing. So, um, again, belief in a god doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that you worship that god, right? Um, and then you know, not believing atheism is kind of a I don't I don't know atheism. I mean, I wonder what kind of benefits, what kind of character that would give benefits to. Um, I think there's probably something given the open-ended non-class system that Chronicles of Lyria has. I don't know what it would be specifically, though. You know, I, I wonder if someone engages in atheism, if it basically just makes them a target that everybody's like, oh, I see there's these faithless people over here. Go send some missionaries to deal with the situation and and that just everybody is sent, you know, wave after wave at different intervals to try to recruit those people to their faith in, in missionary style fashion. And then it's up to the resolve of that culture, whether they want to, you know, stay the course and remain as atheists or, um, you know, partner up with one of them and, you know, finally choose a god. So I could see that also being a part of it is that, you know, people come either, you know, threatening to, you know, bow, bow down to this god or else or trying to curry favor. Oh, this is, you know, it'll be a prosperous time. You see, it's a prosperous god. Here's all this golden crap we brought for you. You know, so I could see that being really, uh, really an interesting sort of thing that they could play with if they wanted to. Well, and there's a comment um, uh, wondering if Soulbound Engine will implement religious wars. You know, what's interesting to me is that all this would be driven by players, more or less, right? Your, your kings on down, right? They would be directing what to do, where to go. Uh, your, your kings, your religious leaders, your guild leaders, and your own personal, like, What's my soul's quest? What's what what do they want my my soul to do to advance at this point? Whether that's uh, offered uh, implicitly or explicitly. Because my 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 immediate thought is, would would players even care enough about a fake in game religion mm -hmm. to create some sort of religious war? But then I automatically think back to our last show where we're talking about players caring so much that they're following kings and doing what they're told. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that 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 even becomes a silly question. Well, yeah, of, of course, of course, they're going to want to probably follow. Yeah. You know. But then that raises the next question for me, which is could, could a king change that? Right. Could they direct you to, you know, okay, you're no longer going to believe in this religion. You know, how does that work? Because um, also in that YouTube comment, the last part of that was, uh, can you something to ask? Uh, can I use skill points or faith points? to somehow change NPCs? Can I spread religion amongst the, the non-player characters somehow? 
Um, so there's which, which, there's which would go to the idea of you know if a king says, well, you're no longer going to do this, can you actually direct your your NPCs as well? There's a few things. For one thing, I think that um, it's not going to just be directed by the players. I think uh, storylines will have gods determining what their followers are supposed to do, and then it's going to be up to the players to decide whether they want to follow and reap the benefits or whether they want to rebel and deal with the consequences. And um, especially when we do have NPCs interacting with their cities, um, there can be some impact on whether or not, you know, our cities remain prosperous. That's not just up to the, to the players. Um, and, I mean, everything we choose to do is going to have consequences or benefits. So um, if the gods tell us the king to, or kingdom to do something and the players say we aren't going to do it, I don't know. Weather could change. Crops could fail. Who knows what the consequences could be or be more difficult. Um, so, so well, it, it could also be that it opens the door for a different god to um, kind of take over. It's like, oh, hey, I see that you're, you know, rejecting so and so stuff. I like that. I'm going to give you all a blessing while his, uh, you know, his or her favor, you know, starts waning. And just so long as you keep up doing the good thing and maybe mention my name every now and then, we can uh, we can do some business here. So you know that could also be you know a big thing is that's how whole kingdoms religion changes is through rejecting what one asks of them and being offered to uh you know basically having a god reaching out to the kings and leadership and and saying hey we're gonna we're gonna play ball now right and where they... players where the reputations of players can influence npc reactions i would think that would be true to proselytizing a religion too if you know i i can see them having that in there fairly easily so we can create a this cult is, <laughs> i think there will yeah. be religions i don't know that we can create a cult like i, I don't, don't know, know why we couldn't could, i don't know if players could could create a religion and then convert npcs to it but i think we can def definitely convert NPCs to exist to the religions of to the existing religions. I think we can definitely do that. Can that be another avenue to take away influence from counts and dukes and kings if an, if a player is able to change NPC beliefs? Starting a cult, spreading a cult. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what do you mean by cult? Something contrary to what is allowed. You know, uh, a kingdom follows a certain religion. I assume that's how it will go. So you create uh, something within that kingdom that's in direct conflict to whatever the mainstream. Um, I guess it depends on know, how much the uh, kingdom is funded by and um, beholden to the church or, you know, whatever whatever religion it is. Because if they're economically independent of whatever religious things that are going on, most likely the religion could be, you know, completely in flux or more likely than not at that point, people are free to worship whatever and they don't actually have a um, kind of a, a specific religion for the kingdom. Um, you know, it, it really depends on the situation. To be determined. I guess we don't know enough yeah. yet. Um so, I don't know. It's an interesting topic. Maybe if we find out more later on, we can kind of spend more time with it. Yeah. I mean, this might um, spark some conversation from the uh, Soulbound Studios staff internally about the subject. And, you know, who knows, we might want a little bit more in some later update. Let's see. There was another. Let me find another comment. Oh, wait. Uh, fuck digs. No, wait. That's not the one I wanted to read. That is actually... <laughs> That is, that is actually a comment. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I wonder who it's uh, by. I wonder if I know who it is. Uh, miss, Mr. I know everything. Oh, wait, I, I, meant, I did not mean to read that comment. Um, <laughs> uh, this was one going back um, actually from the last show. The quote of the information is there. And the comment was, well, where? That's my biggest issue, which we kind of already talked about. But um, you know, I think that is an ongoing sort of thing as to where do I find all of this information. Um, I still think Discord use is on purpose because it's harder to find what people have said, so it's easier to say something 
and not be holding to that later. Uh, so, hmm, here's something I've been wondering is how many people that are asking for new content and waiting for new stuff have actually gone through and read and reviewed everything that the developers have already released, all of the um, lore-related stuff and images and um, video content and all of that stuff, because I wonder if it's one of those things where if you try to chase them for new details, you're not going to get much because they've already said and revealed most of what they're going to say and reveal for a while. And that instead reviewing all of the old content would in fact give a better perspective on things and um, give a little bit better idea of, you know, what the game's about and where it potentially will be going once they start giving us more, uh, more regular news about, you know, what's actually happening. Obviously, the timeline has changed multiple times and the, uh, the whole switch to uh, Freeliria was like, you know, kind of one one big step after another that instead they changed into one and a half gigantic steps. So, um, you know, it's kind of kind of been an interesting sort of thing. But one thing that I've been thinking about with this, and I mentioned it in our uh, Discord chat room, is the idea that the way the information's been presented and uh, kind of dished out, it's been a little bit slow, and it's something that I, I wonder if it could have been done maybe as even more of a trickle, but a trickle that's a little bit more regular, like we kind of saw with uh, Landmark and EverQuest Next. Um, the difference there, though, with that situation in this one is I think about the fact that I don't, you know, SERP is not the brand manager, the, the community manager is only able to have so much authority versus with Landmark, Amid was hands-on with the community stuff, but he was the, the brand manager. He actually had the say on what was revealed and what wasn't revealed, as well as what the spin on it was. And he was able to do that, uh, I believe, largely without impacting the developer's time. So um, probably just you know came in on every sprint and saw what he wanted. And was like, there, that, make a video of it. I'm going to use that for a presentation. <laughs> So, um, you know, he, he really was the master of, um, Omid was really the master of keeping that, uh, hype train going and he, he kept it going as long as he could. And once it ran out, once there was nothing more he could do, he left the company. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, yeah. And that's, I guess, kind of similar, well, attached to the words of the information. So that was from, let me just read that quote too, cause that was something we were talking about. Uh, that was actually posted in general today, uh, Today, yeah, by Logan. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, was that yesterday? Anyways, um, basically commenting on Caspian, sort of do I release more information? Do I not release more information? We're doing these sprints. Do do I wait till we have actually a little bit more? Do I tell you now? And, and I guess the question was just sort of what do we think about that? Um, either non-information or... Uh, I guess information on and on information. <laughs> uh, here's some information about nothing. Um, I I still go back to just give me like sprint highlights. It's just you know that shouldn't be hard. You should have sprint highlights of something you're doing internally, and then just redact the ones that we're not supposed to know about. I I think that would actually do a lot for us. That you know people that are able to look at things at the high level, are able to, you know, read those notes and understand a little bit better about what's going on. And people that can't can, you know, run around in circles speculating about what they think it actually means. That sounds dangerous to me. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the interesting part is what is the information that people in general want to see? And the problem is, is that no matter what it is, there's going to be a vocal portion that's going to say, yeah, that's not what I want. That's crap. Give me something else. Um, <laughs> well, and they are the most vocal, right? Because the people that got what they want are generally quiet reading it. <laughs> well, there you go. Right. Um, yeah. So, that, yeah, that would be my big, big question to ask there is, um, two different people. Um, what is it that you want to see? And I wonder what it is 
like for me, I'm kind of ready to get some more hands-on play. How many years has it been in development, CLE? Two? Few. I mean... Was it 2016 or... When the Kickstarter happened? Yeah. Let's see. I mean, it's not been Star Citizen length of time. I don't think. It has not been the Star Citizen length I mean, it's, of time. It's, and I it's hope been a little... It's, that's the extreme. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it that was what it's twenty sixteen, right? Or was it fifteen? Uh, 16. Yeah, it was twenty sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So. Um and I guess, you know, some of that is being spoiled by landmark. I don't know if we should use that as our um as no, our measure. No. Uh, I've talked with snipe hunter about this and you know he he knows like he recognized when uh he was working on when everquest next went down everquest next and landmark it's like oh shit that's you know that's gonna be uh making it a lot harder for anybody trying to do anything similar going forward to actually get buy-in from investors and sure enough you know i believe that was part of what contributed to revival running out of resources that nobody wanted to jump on that train anymore after you know the venerable sony online entertainment turn daybreak games completely tanked their you know what decade long project that they based their new engine on and everything so uh i can understand why and then when revival went down because they ran out of resources that made everyone even more gun shy about the subject um so yeah i mean that that definitely um had impact like it's it's something that if we were able to show what the completed games running you know for a year looked like to investors then people would jump on it but we can't, unfortunately. It's you know, time doesn't work like that. So, you know, it's um, it's not something where I think uh, the people with the big bucks have a lot of faith, and so it's going to be, you know, a slow burn to get it completed. Um, but I believe they will eventually get there. Well, okay. So, and I'm just trying to think of this kind of stuff that I would like to see from Chronicles of Illyria if it's not going to be actual in-game play. I mean, one of the things that I did like about Revival as well is that we even just getting to jump into a house and start decorating objects, you know, felt like it was something tangible. Um, but even so, again, I really liked the blogs that they had, especially the ones that were a day in the life of a whatever... Um, so I could get an understanding of what a day in the life of a character might be. Um, that seems to be more difficult to do with uh, Chronicles of Illyria. But even so, I, w I would love to have blogs about iconic characters um, that are part of the lore. So I can feel more attached to the story somehow. But um, so far, it's kind of... I mean, we've got these uh, items that we can buy and it kind of maybe gives me an idea of something I can do. Although Phantom X, I think, doesn't <laughs> doesn't like the idea of that in the way that I do. Like, um, I did miss the um, the item that I was, that I forgot to purchase yesterday was the Argury set. Um, hopefully that will be offered again sometime later down the road. But, uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what I would want to do in the game. Um, and a set like that is maybe something that I'd be interested in, in using. I can have some ideas of how I might use that, although it is a little strange. I didn't get to see how much money it cost, so I don't even know if it's like worth it. I don't know if that's uh, 25 bucks, 50 bucks. I don't know how much that that kit is, so I don't know. You know, it's Spending more. Ties perfectly together. Keep, keep going. Yeah, spending uh, you know the, as much as I would on a subscription, a monthly subscription, or maybe even twice as much as I would on a monthly subscription for one item in a game that I can't play yet, um, just so I can understand if I'd even like to play the game. You know, that's sort of um, an sorry. 
Keep going. No, I'm done. No, see, I sort of have an extreme view on a couple of parts of this. So, so I, I don't. I, I'm at a point where I don't. And this is not me having a lack of faith in Soulbound or any of them. That's not what this means. But I'm at a point I don't care about blogs. I don't care about. I don't want you to take the time to do all that. You know, you have, for better or worse, these sort of major MMO sites shitty as they might be in some of their editorials and their reviews, regardless, they have readers, they have customers or potential customers. And you're sort of at a point where everybody's saying, there's no game to play. You know, I, I don't have anything to look at. I don't have anything to put my hands on. And that is getting spread to everyone else outside of your core base at this point. Um, so so I'm sort of at a point where I, I don't I don't care for that. I don't care if you give me a sprint update. I don't care if you give me a, this is 0.5. Um, I'd rather you don't. I'd rather you just work on it so that there's something to do six <coughs> months from now, eight months from now, um, rather than wasting the time and resource. I know they say, well, we don't really spend that much time. Well, you're a small group. I mean, any little bit of time you spend on one area is still taking away a significant amount of time from another. It's not like you have 200 employees, you know, to, to do this. Um, and that kind of brought me to my other point in the, the chat is I'm kind of over the whole idea of open development as well. It's sort of, OK, that was cool for the last, you know, the last five years have been neat. You know, cool. Get to see a, get to see how it's done. Get to talk with the developers, kind of work through the stages. I'm kind of past that. I mean, I, mean, I think you could name more games that have come out worse than been critical successes as, as they presented through the sort of open, the quote, open development phase. Right. Um, you know, I, 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 I tend to have a hard time thinking of anything that was sort of a really big success that was was an open development. I mean, you think of some of the larger MMOs. So, yes, there's more contact. I guess when I say open development, so things like COE, things like Ashes um, versus something like World of Warcraft, which was created, you know, in, a, in the traditional sense or Final Fantasy, which is traditional sense, Elder Scrolls. You know, you, you get sort of patch updates and things that are coming, but it's not I wouldn't call it open development. Um, necessarily. Um, so I feel like we're kind of getting to where it's more of a hindrance. Um, that's cool and all, but let's not do it anymore. But, but I also recognize that for a studio the size of Soulbound, it's sort of needed, right? They, we were just, you were just talking about funding. I mean, that they, have to, they have to continue revenue somehow. And if, you're, you know, if you need to do that and you need to be getting it from players, but you don't have a game yet. Well, you have to give them some reason to give you money. I understand that. So you want to give them the updates. You want to, you know, as part of the the in crowd, the you know the special special kids. You know, you get the inside information. Um, so I understand that there's sort of a financial need to do that, um, to create new items to buy and all this and that. But it's sort of getting to a point. Three years, people are starting to wonder. You know, just just kind of get to it, like uh, and do it. Um, you know, I, we won't, I won't mention the game. We've had a talk with a, with a different game about that, just sort of shut up and do it. Um, and they're actually right now pretty, you know, pretty far along and doing fairly well. Um, so I have sort of an extreme view of that. Uh, but I'm also someone who I don't necessarily, just because, you know, I give them money to be account, I'm not expecting, like, every week, give me something new. That's just not how I think about it. That's not how I do, um, which is probably different than a lot of people that have put money into it. Uh, that are expecting something. Uh, so it's my my thoughts on that. I'd just rather you just kind of do your thing. Don't I don't I don't don't worry about don't even take the time to write a long post about hmm, should I update you or should I not update you? Should I wait? Should I do it now? Like don't even waste the hour to do that. Spend that hour doing something else. Um, yeah, I mean I think um Euro probably uh, has experienced this. One of the issues that we have is um, there is a different mindset from being on the gamer consumer side of the of the fence, and then being on the production uh, developer side of the fence, um, and what your expectations are, and what your needs are, but especially what your expectations are changes a great deal, which is why when Nero says, oh, I just like to see some information about the sprint because that has a lot more meaning. I can tell a whole lot um, that gamers aren't necessarily going to be able to um, to perceive. 
Um, but Snipe Hunter had uh, we t- talked about the uh, the tweet that um, the tweets that Snipe Hunter had um, made a couple of weeks ago, um, where he talked about this a little bit. Is that when you are not being backed by somebody like Sony, and you do have to get the money, and you go to crowdfunding to um, help you develop your game? Those people who put in money in advance expect to be updated. They expect to um, be able to play early. They expect to be able to give feedback. And the interesting thing is how much they expect that feedback to be taken. Um, I think this is the way MMORPGs should be made. And since it's not made yet, you should take what I say and make your game like that. That's only going to go so far. Right. Um, and, I mean, it's it's one of those things that um, uh, not necessarily that people forget, but sometimes people um, just never really think about is that these aren't amateurs. These are industry professionals. They know how to make good design decisions, and they know approximately what they want to do. Um I can't speak for everybody, but, you know, a lot of folks, they kind of have a vision of how the game actually plays, you know, system wise and everything in their head and are, you know, working on extrapolating those features. And where where there's conflict in butting of heads is where two people um, didn't get two or more people didn't get enough information on the subject that they don't have the same clarified vision of what a particular part of the the product's vision and a specific feature um, is actually supposed to be and how it's supposed to work. But that can easily be resolved. You have sprint meetings, you have, um, you know, designers who are, um, you know, more just like taking orders and some of them that are, you know, doing the ones actually calling the shots. Uh, It's it, it all gets worked out. Yeah, so we have in the chat um, that they should do more Q and A's, and even just doing do taking that. the question part. Even if once per month they took questions, and then took some time to figure out, you know, how many. Well, and to some degree, that's what um, Omid would would do. Mm-hmm. Um, we would have uh, those surveys about, you know, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about next month? Um, and then we'd get feedback from that, and, you know, he'd come up with something for the next month. Um, so, yeah, even just asking what we're interested in, and then the next month maybe they, were, they could do one or two things to give us stuff to talk about, which is the other thing that was said is there's not enough new information for people to continue talking. We, we don't know anything else to talk about. Um, and I don't think that the items are achieving that goal. The armor well, so, sets. So, so, like so here's my thing with that, though, is, is if you're over a three, four year development cycle, you're going to run out of things to talk about, right? You're not going to have something new every week, every month, or even maybe even every month, to talk about. Like, what are what are our expectations? How much, you know that that's that's I guess is and I and I and I, I understand the comments in chat. Yeah, I mean that you're if if your if your core group, who is funding you, is all of a sudden becoming very silent, that probably is a problem. So so you have to figure out the balance, right? Do we just keep our heads down and keep trying to do this thing? Or do we take the time to, to try to address you? Um, right. But but I guess that a lot of that comes and it sort of goes to also to Snipes that Twitter post. So so what are our expectations? Are they reasonable or not? Um, right. I just I just don't think it's reasonable to assume you're going to have enough information over three or four years that you're going to have something to talk about every week, maybe even every month. Yeah, I don't think you have every week, but you probably do have enough for every month. But again, it depends on how much you want to reveal. Um, um, But I think we had a couple of questions today, even like how would religion affect things? That's a good topic that, you know, we could get a few paragraphs of an answer to. Um, 
tie that into uh, how some of these, um, not so much the gear, um, but I would like to know how, how would this augury um, kit impact me? You know, what, what else, what exactly would I be able to do? Um, and I have a little bit of that in the write up of it, but you know, I might have more questions about about that. And again, that might be a nice day in the life of, although the day in the life of were fairly long. Uh, yeah, there's a question, there's a comment too from uh, Baldrin. Um, there's plenty to talk about, it's just behind closed doors, um, which, which is maybe true, but then that starts to bring into, I'm sure they talk about obviously stuff every day, but is it really going to make it into the game? And if not, if you're not, you know, 70, what would you say, 75% sure, <laughs> at least hopefully more than 50% sure, that, that you could do this, it's probably going to hurt you more than to, to say, hey, we're thinking about this. We're going to try to do this. Um, well, and the thing that keeps coming up time and time again is they promised, like they, they did not say promise anywhere in whatever they said. It's all a tentative schedule. Yeah. They're hoping to be able to do this. That's not the same thing as, as a promise. Um, and that's one of the things that gamers don't understand, but people on the other side of the fence know is inherently the case. Um, schedules are not promises, and even plans to put in a feature is not a promise because you might get to the point where you're supposed to have that and doesn't work or it's not fun or all kinds of stuff. So, so there's, and you guys talked about this too, uh, comment and comments in Twitch now chat of community engagement and the community manager. And that was actually a part of the original, I think discussion from today, yesterday and today was, well, you know, what about these events and, and web games and things? I, I don't necessarily equate the two. I, I don't feel necessarily like, yes, news releases, information releases are going to obviously spur community engagement because you have something to talk about. But I don't think you have to do both. I, I feel like if you had a confidence in your community team, however small that might be, you could let them run with things to keep people engaged. Maybe let them take some new stuff in to their engagement, new, pic, you know, um, pictures or whatever. Um, I don't, I don't think, I feel like that's two different topics sort of being that, that are that are meshed together, but they're not the same thing. So I wouldn't be, a, you know, if they had someone dedicated to, this is where I still, I think even, again, if you could bring in a, a group of, of your core backers that, that you trust, that you could get to, I don't know, sign NDAs or whatever you could do to bring them in, let them start to create stuff for you. Um, I mean, that, that's, that would, I think that would be a perfect opportunity. Um, but that, I guess, requires a level of trust. Uh, well, one of the things I was going to say, too, is that um, it would be nice even if you um, asked uh, podcasters what they would like topics, offer topics to talk about, um, ask them what they would like to talk about. Um, I mean, I would just like more engagement with um with the various podcasts, uh, what was the town crier? Was that the name of mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. one? I haven't even checked on yeah. them in a, yeah. in a month or so. Um, I wonder if they're even still doing regular podcasts. They had stopped for several weeks. Um, so I've forgotten to check on them, but I just wish they were engaged. One of the things that I um, suggested to Serpentius is that it would be nice if you could put all the podcasters on some kind of schedule so we would know, hey, um, once a month, you know, we get an interview with, or once every other month, we get an interview with um, with a dev, you know. Um, seems like you could put that on a calendar, six, six interviews for the year. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Um, Okay. Well, that, you know, we talk a little bit about money and betas and things like that. So let me find this other comment that I did want to also go over. Where, see, where is it? Fuck digs. No, wait, that's the wrong one still. <laughs> um, I just... Popular comment. You just got to gotta love YouTube, right? I mean, how many people would come say to you that, say that to you in person? Not very many. Um, 
And this, this is, this again echoes, <laughs> it's just funny to me. Um, anyways, um, that was actually from like three months ago. That's not recent. Um, there's been no recent comments about you. Uh, this sort of parrots a lot of, of um, it massively in, in the, the MMORPG. Um, there was a comment, and it actually was kind of interesting. Actually, no, it was it was on the episode that we talked about them. Um, but it says, I think they're just causing more problems by allowing players to purchase positions in-game with real-life money. So is that a problem? Um, I don't think so. I, I don't think so, because those players can still be killed. They, they can still be disposed of what you're what you're doing is you're getting money that you need but you're also um we've we've talked about sort of the, in the past the psychology especially when you see like console wars people who are xbox fans or ps4 fans and you know y'all yours is terrible yours is terrible a lot of that really comes down to the research saying it's because they invested 500 dollars in the xbox one x so of course they're going to say it's the best thing they're not going to spend 500 dollars and say well damn i bought the shitty one um <laughs> They're just not going to do that. So it's sort of the same idea, right? You want people to be leading the charge, especially when you're a small team. So you you have the benefit of you you have money coming in, but you also have people that are now emotionally and financially invested into what they've put thousands of dollars into. I um, actually don't have a problem with that, um, specifically because they can also still. It's not like the king has some sort of special shield that's going to take five years to break through, um, right? They 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 don't. And, and that, 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 again, it, it really does pair. And I assume that somebody who probably read one of those articles, because when you read those, they don't, the, the, the writers don't really, you know, it's not like you're buying some special, you know, magic health potion because you spent $10,000, right? You're not, you're not really getting those sorts of benefits um, when we think of pay to win. Um, I guess indirectly with roads and, 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 and things you build, sure. But, but it's not like the, the, play, the character itself has some you know, magical shield that, that not, o- only a god can penetrate. Um, not even roads. Honestly, the only thing that you buy that's actually permanent is recipes because they, uh, I believe, don't make recipes degrade. I believe they stay with your uh, your your character permanently. I could be mistaken. You Maybe, maybe recipes can be stolen or lost or burnt or degrade over time. Uh, if so, then no, nothing that you buy is actually permanent. And so you're not paying to win. You're paying for early convenience and having a certain kind of influence on the world in the place where you start in exposition. It's certainly not winning. In fact, I still always go back to what the hell is winning in an MMO. I'll say... Um, EVE Online, it's having uh, all of the zero uh, security space on lockdown bases and uh, uh, ships and fleets and, you know, mother ships everywhere, all under one flag and no infighting, um, which I think that's largely how the China server plays. That it's mostly under one corporation. So I guess they win. Um, but other than that, like... The the only way to win an MMO is to pick the terms by which you you uh, declare victory. Otherwise, the only other way to win an MMO is to stop playing it. <laughs> That's pretty much the only two ways. Yeah. Um. There's some interesting chatter. What was what is this going on with you? What are you in here talking about, Diggs? Uh. Reaching out, so I guess the the consensus is trying to reach out, expand the game. Is that kind of what we're talking about in chat there? Um, to yeah, play? it was it was interesting. Uh, well, it started with um, how they're engaging with the community is wrong, and then uh, someone was saying that um, they should engage outside of the community, and I was wondering what that means. Um, Pax came up that they're thinking about not going to Pax and working instead on development. Um, and I'm wondering if they have something to show at PAX that would be meaningful. But well, that's that's, that's what thing, I was right? going to say. Yeah, if you've got a build that you want to show because it's something that's imminently going to release, you know, or it's good enough that you can do a localized demo of it, by all means, do PAX. Please do PAX. Don't not do PAX. 
But if you don't, then it's tough to justify doing PAX. Or it's just ju- tough to justify doing that one, skip it and wait till the next one. Right. Um, if we're talking about PAX um, uh, West or whatever, the one that's up in their area, that's in like September, isn't it? So um, Yeah, August, September. I don't know any actual concrete details about anything, but I have a strong suspicion they will have something playable by then. Well, and that kind of goes to the the idea of engaging outside of your core community, right? Because you're, you're, you're the people who care enough, my opinion, the people who care enough to be invested at this point, you've probably already tapped that group, right? The ones that are willing to do all this without anything, necessary, really anything in return. I feel like you can't start to engage outside of your core group until you have something to show them yeah. that you can play or, and this, this goes back again to, you know, my thought is just, just, I don't care about the updates. Just put your head down and do it. Um, just, just get something. Cause that's what you're going to have to do to show. Um, again, going back to massively and all those others, it's, it's like what you just said, uh, neuro, if you, the, you put something that looks horrible, regardless of if you say, Hey, this is pre, pre, pre alpha, this is not even alpha. You're still going to get hit by all these people. <laughs> we told you so it looks terrible. I mean, look at, um, even Anthem, Anthem, you know, it's, you know, so much focus on bugs within within a game, which is really not so far. I've had a lot of fun with it, you know, and, but so you can imagine if some you already have people that are writing articles about you that you're 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 lying, you're not going to be able to do this. And then you <laughs> rush it and you put something and, and that's that's just, I think, the reality of the situation. Um, they're just probably in a tough spot. And then, and I, my opinion is if you're in a tough spot, then you just put your head down and you keep doing it. Because um, putting out half-assed stuff, you're going to, you know, you're going to lose your core group anyways. You might as well just put out something good because that's what's going to bring everyone to you is if it's good or not. Um, not if you just put something out there. Um, yeah, and I think that's one of those things because they they did the switch from um, Voxelyria to Preleria. Um, that again, that was that one and a half gigantic steps I was talking about. That they skipped Voxelyria and the entire demo cycle of that to go to something that's closer and more representative to the final game. Um, and use more of the actual assets of the game instead of having an alternate set of assets and a world that's actually less you know, representative of how you're actually going to interact with the final product. But in doing so, it definitely meant a much longer delay in um, when it was going to be something that we'd be able to see. And I, you know, looking back, I don't know if they actually hammered that point really well and really, you know, explained that, look, this isn't like, it's not like we flipped a switch and we switched from like pixel mode to to you know full HD mode or something. This is this is a complete change, and so it's going to mean a longer time before we actually see the next you know you see the next playable unit. Um, <clears throat> if they had been a little little harder about that, and you know maybe showed just one limited screenshot of assets that look decent that are arranged in a nice way even if there's nothing else going on with it and they don't give any explanation just one of those every two weeks i think would Mm. probably be pretty nice like that would at least give us a little bit more to look at and talk about actually a fair comparison would be star citizen um you know it it was hype 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 then you get to sort of three years there's nothing there people start really dogging on it there this is you know this is this is not going to happen they're taking our money you don't really hear that anymore and the reason why is because they actually now have something that is kind of playable it looks really good you know so, so they're actually at a point where they can show play you know, this is this is this is where your money's going this is our effort um they kind of work past all of that and now they have something to present to people that actually looks really pretty i mean it looks visually looks really good um so that's why i think you don't see necessarily as much you'll still get obviously the comments i'll make the comments you know star citizen timeline or 
their their pay, you know, the way they work out their financials. But um, in in the grand scheme of things, all of those comments really have been kind of pulled back in, and I think that's why. Um, so. But then we're also talking about um, many, many more millions of dollars. Yeah. Um, well, and that's, if they had if they had even a tenth of that bankroll, what it was? How many how many million did they finally have in the end? Like two hundred is a lot. I mean, they're still yeah. they're still getting. I mean, they're still yeah. Getting, so. Even even ten percent of that. Well, and I should and I guess I should, yeah, I shouldn't released. say necessarily they're equivalent financially or scope or size. But my point just was that that they kind of worked through all the negativity and produced something that actually worked that looks pretty good. Um, now, if that persists for another three years without any improvement, then then they're going to be back into where they were, th you know, a year ago. But um, that that's just where, you know, I th I, my opinion is for them just to, you know, at, at this point, just keep just keep powering through it. Um, maybe figure out some community engagement things to keep your core group in. To me, I, that wouldn't be a priority. Um, personal. Um, <laughs> Especially with the things that we've had, they've not all been perfect. <laughs> um, you know, so so even putting in the effort and time, they've not necessarily been the greatest to do. So uh, let let Serpenti let let them engage the community. Let let the community create something and and do some sort of backing that it's obviously officially f you know backed by you, not just some three random people on Twitch. Uh, by our names, creating some random community event. Actually, have it you know have it somehow tied to Soulbound, but um, well, yeah, or just two legitimate people, two legitimate <laughs> random people. Well, that excludes um, us. Um, no, that excludes me. Fuck digs. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's just um, going to become your greeting pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, honey. Um. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would love it if they had if if they had a demo of Prelyria at PAX. I mean, that would be cool. I don't seems like they don't have that prepared for PAX East. But if they could get that ready for um, for uh, PAX West, I think that would be cool. And I think, but and, and it's an interesting thing. I wonder if it's because of our previous experience with Landmark and Revival where we're like, yeah, I'd rather you work on the development so I know that development is happening than get updated frequently. Um, so I know we're at the end. There was, there was another part of this comment, though, that I completely disagreed with or thought was stupid, but I wanted to read it because it was continued with the, the comment on... Uh, purchasing positions with real money also says um, game companies shouldn't be milking people and for and this goes to star citizen too shouldn't be milking people and forcing them to pay f for access to a beta well wait that actually goes to basically every game that exists now uh, if you want to put out a beta make it free i am paying money this perfectly fits with snipe uh, if i am paying money to play in a beta i expect my opinion to be taken seriously if you expect your opinion to be taken seriously please go into game design and not do whatever you're doing now. Um, anyways, it's just a, it's a long, basically, don't make me pay to test your game. Um, to which my response is, you're not being made to pay. You're choosing to. Right. And if you're a terrible tester, they're not going to take your opinion. They right. shouldn't, really shouldn't anyways, is my opinion. But maybe on broad things. But um, I don't know if it, either of you have anything to say to that. Um, I generally feel the same way about cosmetics too. People are like, "Yeah, they're making me pay for cosmetics." Like, if you don't like it, don't pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel as though their customers should put up money to participate in a beta and provide a service to devs. I, I mean, I think that is sort of the blurring of early access beta alpha. What does that all mean? Um, is why you get into this issue, but. I just think that opinion, that 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 comment's really stupid, personally. Um, hold on one second, guys. If I can get this over to us in general. I can't open up anything in Discord because it will take oh. me out of your screen. 
So. Okay. Well, uh, what's it say? Does it say zero. something? Let's see. Uh, I'm in a tricky place right now. Most releases are three to six months. I think our longest. Oh, uh, this yeah. is the thing. That, that's what this was is the yeah. thing from. Yeah. yeah, we we were saying that earlier. Yeah. Um, the updates. See, that's also a, I know we're out of time. Um, that's also a problem, I think, with having your your main people be the, the, the lays on to the community. Right. That that's also the problem of having Caspian or Snipe be, you know, the, the, the information presenters to everyone in your discord. Right. They that really shouldn't be their role. I don't think that that, that should be your community team's role um, or whoever. That, that just shouldn't be their role. They should be focused on actually creating the game, um, you know. This is my my two cents on that, and I, which we've talked about before. I mean, having him as sort well, of the main. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I mean, we have been thinking about um, it's an interesting thing. We've been thinking about interviews with Snipe Hunter and Caspian, and you know they're so busy and all this stuff, but. Serpentius might be free. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and it doesn't even have to be a long interview, but I'm thinking again in terms of Omid, and I know what you were saying about, you know, being able to get things signed off and approved on. Um, but it, I wonder if it'd be interest if it'd be easier to get um, questions, some answers and then instead of the devs taking time away to present the answers maybe that could be serpentius who presents the answers i mean i don't know i'm not sure if caspa's gonna be sitting there with uh uh the his finger on the power button waiting if you know anything is being said that shouldn't be he's gonna yeah i mean, <laughs> I mean if you're just reading from you're reading the answers i don't you don't have to expound on that i'm not saying that serpentius should be the one who knows the answers but that's you a know, level he can trash. gather them and well you can always end those if it goes around yeah. <laughs> that's but, true uh, I'm, well ooh, i was about to make a political statement <laughs> What I think I know the one you might have been. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm able to edit before I say something. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to end up with another "fuck you" digs on our YouTube channel. <laughs> I do actually. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna just be a thing. Now everybody's gonna start doing it. Um, anyways, all right. Well, we um, that was a whole bunch of questions. I like doing that. Certainly, if y'all have anything that you know, if if Soulbound's not giving you stuff to kind of chatter about, uh, we will. Uh, happy to um just just youtube or discord or or wherever there you go for the record fuck you dicks yes <laughs> um yeah because it also gives us you know so that we don't have to actually spend time <laughs> figuring out what the hell we're going to talk about um because there is a lack of information uh which i'm okay with so um, I guess last thing, any anything, anybody playing anything? Oh, so anybody that actually does play Anthem, I'm going to actually start playing that once I get a little used to it. Uh, I did not play any of the early stuff, so um, anybody plays it, let me know uh, in Discord. I'll kind of join you. Um, I've been getting into PlayStation a little bit more, so getting back to used to controllers and stuff like that. Uh, I know I'm like two years late, but Horizon Zero Dawn is an excellent game. Yeah, Nero so was play playing uh, Sea of Thieves. Yeah, Sea of Thieves. Uh, probably going to play that tomorrow night uh, with some folks. Yeah, so we don't only talk; we actually also play games. So um, yeah, let us know. Um, I'm happy I to try out a bunch the, of stuff. The free uh, Axiom Verge off of the um, dreaded Epic Game Store or beloved. I don't, I don't know how people perceive <laughs> it at this point still. The but Steam Axiom Killer. Axiom Verge is free. Yeah, I don't know. I think Discord's going to be the Steam killer offering 90 uh 90 10 split. That's like so so sweet. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> All right. Well, um okay. I guess everyone have a good weekend. We will be back next week with our Ashes show. I promise. Well, I can't promise. We missed it last week. So, well, we will definitely cuz I know Diggs has a lot to talk about there. Because that is where you're spending all your time is in their chat. Um, mm -hmm. So, anyways, thanks for joining us uh, and have a good Friday night. We'll see you in a week.
See you later. See you.